happy video day guys and a happy make up your mind day today we are searching for a brand new release i'm super excited to be bringing you guys this make up your mind because when i saw this launch I actually got excited because I feel like I've seen a few launches already that I haven't done a make up your mind on. I've considered it, but they hadn't been like, like I really want to do it. This one actually got me to want to do it as quick as possible. So the palette is actually from Urban Decay and it looks just like this and it's called the new Naked Wild West palette. So this is part of their Naked collection. You know how they always come out with like these Naked palettes and they're in these tins where this is the newest one. It's 12 desert inspired neutral eyeshadows. It has some deep blue green in there and it's gonna retail 49 US dollars. It's releasing on February 8th. So I said, you know what? Let's search through my collection. Let me see what I can find for you guys. Was I able to find anything that looks very, very similar? I'm gonna give you guys my idea of what I think the color story might look like in order to tell you guys whether I think the color story makes sense, whether I think that this is going to be a palette that I personally need to pick up. Of course, at the end of the video, I will tell you guys whether I'm gonna pick up this palette or not. But I wanna know right now, are you guys interested in this palette? Does it attract your attention? Tell me that right now. So if you haven't done so already, don't forget, hit subscribe, join the channel. I love to talk about makeup and fashion and yeah, let's get into it. All right, so I always start off the video showing you guys the results. So here are my results. These are the colors that I was able to find in my collection that mimic a very similar color story to the new Naked palette, okay? So I will say that I automatically thought of two palettes right away right when I saw this theme. I said, oh my goodness. First I thought, you're duping yourself because I thought of the Urban Decay Born to Run. I actually ended up not using the Born to Run, but it kind of reminded me a lot of the Born to Run. So I pulled this one out, ended up not using it because I found that there was some other palettes that really look a lot more similar. So let me quickly show you guys the palettes that I used in order to mimic the color story. The first one is the Jaclyn Hill palette. This is her Morphe collab. This one I pulled a lot of shades, guys. Also, I had to jump into Natasha Denona's Safari palette. Safari also has a really, really similar color story. Listen to the crack of this thing. <laughs> to put like WD-40 in it. Then I used the subculture from ABH. You guys remember the subculture? I don't even think you could buy this anymore, but this palette right here has a very similar vibe as well. And then finally for two colors, they put in some mystery colors here. I call them like the, the unknown colors, like the colors that probably shouldn't have been in here, but they put them in. They put in some cool tones, which I was able to find in the Natasha Denona Glam palette. So those are the four palettes that I was able to mimic this color story using. I will say that there is one or two palettes that I just showed you guys right now that I think you can come up with almost the same exact looks just using them. But let's go ahead and let's get into exactly how I was able to kind of copy this color story and what I think of the colors that they picked. So for the first color, I actually ended up going into Safari. Like I told you guys, Safari, I feel like has a very similar color theme. The only thing is Safari doesn't have your metallics, so you're not getting any of the metallics in here. But when it comes to the mattes, this matte color story is very, very similar. So what I ended up doing was jumping into this color right here called A Aya. So Aya is this really nice, very muted color. It reminds me a lot of the color that's in this new palette. If you guys can see, it's just a very skin tone color. You could hardly even see it when I pick it up because this right here is gonna look very similar to my skin tone. Looking at the palette, it looks like it's gonna be very similar to this. For somebody like me, this color is a nice blending shade, but I tend to realize that I end up not using these colors very often. Um, I don't know why, it's just not a color I pick up that much. Like I know everybody always says that these colors are the best blending shades and they are like very nice and neutral and you can use them to blend out a look when you don't wanna add color, but but on me, it just kind of like washes away. So the first color, I mean, it's not exciting me. The first color is just like a, okay, fine, nice blending shade color. But when we start going on, I think that when we start moving into this palette is when I start to see a pretty interesting color story. And this is why I got a little bit more excited. For the next one, I actually really like this color. This is a pretty color. 
It's a mix between like a yellow, it looks to me like a yellowy taupe orange, okay? So what I did was I jumped into Safari again. I jumped into the color Tamarind, which is right here, and I just lightly dabbed into Desert Date, okay? Just to add a little bit more orange to this color. And that way it's not super taupe, it actually has that little bit of orange in it, which I see in this image. I see a little orange. So. What I like about this is as we continue with the color story, this to me is a beautiful accent shade for blending. This is an important shade that I feel like if it is similar to this is going to kind of tie this palette together. When it comes to being that peekaboo shade that kind of like comes through and adds brightness to looks, I like this one. I really honestly think it's very pretty and I'm really hoping that it's very similar to this taupe with a little bit of orange in it. I think it's going to be really pretty. The next one is another blending shade. Now this is more of one that I tend to use more often. It's a little bit deeper. And what I did was I found it inside of the Jaclyn Hill palette. If you go into this color right here in Jaclyn Hill, this one right here, it looks really similar. Like when I swatched this, I kind of went like, oh my goodness, that's like almost the same exact color. Like it just gives me almost the same vibe once it's blended out. It has a very similar undertone to this color. I like this color. In the Jaclyn Hill palette, you guys can actually probably see that's one of the colors that has a little indentation in it because I tend to use it a lot to blend out shades. It's a color that is very similar to my skin tone, but actually does show up just a tad. It gives a little bit of warmth to my skin. I probably like it better than the first blending shade because I think that the first one that was very light it almost, to me, I felt like I wished it was a metallic, you know? And this one, I'm okay with it being a matte. So the next one is that really nice, pretty metallic. This one is looking to me like a gold with maybe a little brassiness in it. I think that it might look similar to this palette right here and this beautiful gold that Jaclyn Hill put inside her palette. If you guys see, it's almost like a true gold. It's a true gold, but it has a little bit of brassiness to it. And I love this color. I think that this is a beautiful color. If you guys see the look I have on today, this is a similar look that you could probably create if you buy the new palette. Cause all the colors I used on my lids today are colors that I picked from this Make Up Your Mind. Of course, this is gonna be up on Instagram if you wanna see how I created this look. But this color looks really good with blue greens. It looks good with like orangey reds. So right now the color story is making sense. I mean, I know we're only on the first few which are more neutral looking, but as I continue to show you some of the other colors, you'll start to see why I like these so much. Now, the next color was a wild card. I feel like they just kind of threw this one in and I'm trying to decide whether I love it or I'm confused by it. And I'm starting to think I might love it, but I'm not used to seeing a silver in this kind of palette. So I do know that there's some coolness in this palette, but there's also some warmth. So there are mixing the two like worlds of cool tones and warm tones, but I wasn't, sh I wasn't sure if I loved or hated a silver. I'm starting to think I might actually like it because it might actually look really cool in the inner corners of a lot of the looks you could create with this palette, but, the only palette that I have that has a silver that looks similar was my Glam palette from Natasha. I grabbed into this beautiful silver right here, which is giving me a very, very similar, very pretty silver vibe. That's a nice moment. What I do like about this is if you decide to go in the blue-green direction, which you will see, we're gonna get some blue-greens in here, you can use this silver and kind of do a very cool toned, very different look than some of the other looks that you could create. So yes, it's giving you a different direction, but I wasn't expecting. And then the next color looks like a cool tone brown blending shade, which is another one that I had to stay inside of Natasha Denona to grab. And what I did was I grabbed this first color right here, the one that's called Smoke, even though there's a few smokes in here, but it's this first one right here. So this is the only one in my collection that I could find that looks super, super similar. It had a really nice cool undertone, gave me that deep, brown and I like this color. Okay, so I really like this smoke color. I did not use it on my lids today, but I feel like even if you use some of the beginning shades here, like these lighter blending shades, and you added this smoke color out to the outer edge, you can create a really nice neutral lid that actually has dimension because you are getting some deeper, richer tones in here, which 
I appreciate. I really love it when they give us depth and they also give us lightness so that we can really play with these looks. So, so far the first few colors, if you just look at it like this, it's a very basic neutral palette that has warmth and also has cool tones. So now we need to see what are the fun colors that they're gonna give us to mix with these neutrals that they gave us. And I feel like now is when we start to see that. And maybe now is when you'll start to see why I'm kind of interested in the palette. So the next one, I feel like in the Born to Run, there is a color that might be even closer, but I had Jaclyn Hill out already and there's this color called Pool Party. Now, Pool Party is a really cool looking teal. I think you guys probably remember this color. I don't even know if that's the name, but I remember it being called Pool Party, so that's why I'm saying it is. But it's a really cool looking teal. There was also a color that looks really similar in the Born to Run from Urban Decay, and I like this color. It's not the easiest color to use. This is the color that they put in here to have the shocker color, like that pop of color. Honestly, can't stand it when companies do this. I don't know. I guess I'm just kind of tired of it because when you start to cover those colors, you see that you're getting a very neutral basic palette and they just gave you this pop just to like entertain your eye. This is the color to entertain your eye. This is the pop. So I like it. I think it's a pretty pop. Now, that being said, I hardly ever use this color. This to me is a really nice under waterline color like you can put it on your lower lash line and it does a really nice effect but even when I had the Jaclyn Hill palette it wasn't like the color that I reached for the most it's cool it gave like it gave the palette a different look so now you're changing the look up a little bit just by adding that pop but it is just that it's like the eye catcher color you know they had to give us one so then on the next color, we go back into like the neutral colors and the next one I jumped into Jaclyn Hill again and I jumped into this color right here. It's like a brownie bronzy color that's really, really pretty too. And if you guys can see these two metallics put together, you can see that the color families match really well. I do think that they did a nice combination of color families here of things that actually do work together. However, I am going to preface that by saying it is a little bit more advanced when it comes to some of the deepening shades they put in here, which I will talk about later. Now, when we keep going, the next one is also another color I found inside of Jaclyn Hill, and it's this gorgeous color. I love this color in Jaclyn Hill. It's this gorgeous, like, reddish, brownish amazingness love this color in Jaclyn Hill. So that is a color I adore. I think it's a beautiful tone. And looking at what we've got going here, that's going to be the color that can make you go more into those sunrise looking eyes. You can have some fun with it. I did something a little crazy with it. I mixed it with the blue green. So I added the blue green on the outer edge and I mixed this color in with it. Technically those two colors, when they blend together, they do not make a pretty color. <laughs> if you do it very light-handed and you try to place it perfectly, you can come up with a cool look. But those two colors usually, I mean, they don't, I don't like the way they look together, but you can make them work, but you know. Okay, so now the next one is when we jump to right back into Safari. So inside, inside of Safari, there's this color called Thorn. So Thorn is like a ready brown that is very, very, very pretty. It's very neutral as well. So if you guys can see, there is a very neutral theme to this palette, but they are adding a little accents here and there. I like this color for smoking out the outer edge. You know, between this color and the brown I showed you before, the one from the Natasha Denona that I showed you is a little cooler. So you're gonna have a cooler outcome, not like technically cooler, just like cooler look. And the other one is gonna give you warmth. So it's gonna give you a little bit more of a warm look. So. Both of them are different browns, but you know, they are both browns. <laughs> then the next one is where I feel like they started to add a little bit of fun back into this palette, giving you a little bit of something different. And that's where I jumped into Subculture. So you guys haven't seen Subculture yet, but Subculture does have a very similar idea as well. So I jumped into the color called Axis. Do you remember Axis was like that color everybody had such a hard time working with? I actually liked it, but yeah, Axis is, is a nice color, but because of the tone, it could be a harder color to blend. So we don't know. Is the Urban Decay one going to blend good? We'll see. But it is a blue green, very, very pretty. This one might actually have a little bit more blue. Maybe the Urban Decay one might be a little more green. Not sure, but I think it's gonna have something very similar to this. So this one right here is a cool color. I do feel like it's starting to tie 
the idea together a little bit more and giving us something interesting. You know, now we're starting to see a little bit more interest into this palette. I'm starting to like this a little bit more. I think this color kind of like changed it for me. I don't know, just added something to the palette that I feel like it was missing. And then finally, the last color was a shocker color. So this was kind of just like, hey, where'd you come from? I feel like this one was that like, hey, where, but you know, and if you look at subculture, there's this color called mercury and mercury is like a gray from Urban Decay might actually be a little lighter than this gray. It might be a little lighter gray, but it's still gonna look similar to this gray. So that one to me was like a little shocker color. I was not expecting that color. I'm not 100% sure on what colors I would like to blend that color with because it is like a matte gray. I do like a matte gray, but I'm a little bit perplexed on which colors I want to put with that matte gray. Like I almost feel like that's a nice blending shade and maybe you could just play with it with the silver a little bit or maybe like, maybe you can even add this metallic, but I probably wouldn't put them together. So I'm kind of, a little bit with the gray, I like it, but I feel like if there was more pinks in here, I would have thought that the gray made a little bit more sense. That is the color story. And that's how I was able to come up with it. And I'm gonna tell you guys, like I don't, I want you guys to realize that this palette is a very neutral palette with basically two real pops of color. So if you cover these two colors, you've got a pretty standard basic palette which you may already have inside of Jaclyn Hill. You probably have so many of these colors. Yes, you're not gonna get every single one, but the looks that you can create with this are very similar to the looks you could create with Jaclyn Hill. If you own this color story right here from Subculture, you're also getting a very similar vibe. So if you guys can see, Subculture also has a very similar idea. Like I think Subculture is another one that has a similar vibe. And Safari also is another one. Like if you look at Safari, it has almost all the mattes. You're just not getting the metallics. So in my opinion, Jaclyn Hill's palette is the one that looks the most similar. But I have to say though, overall, this looks to me like Urban Decay is sticking in the direction of the Born to Run, which was a little bit more interesting, had a little bit more pizzazz to it. I think people enjoyed it a lot more. I wish that the packaging wasn't in the Naked palettes. I know, I know they're like super popular, but I hate the tins. So I'm gonna make up my mind right now and say, I think I'm gonna pick it up, okay? But I am going to warn you guys, looking at the color story, I do think some of these deepening shades, like for example, the blue green is not the easiest color to work with. It really is not. And also if you look at some of the colors that you have to mix with it, it makes sense, but they could look a little muddy when they're mixed together. So it really will depend on the formula. You are gonna be able to go in a few different directions, which I do like about this. The cool thing is I feel like this is one of those palettes you can pull out and create different looks, but you may be a little bit limited to the colors that you can use together. That's kind of how I feel with it. You could do some really cool warm looks. You could do some really cool co-tone looks. You can do a mixture of both, but I feel like there's going to be a challenge with some of these colors together that people may not love them together. So that's the only thing with it. And of course the formula, we gotta see if it's any good, but I think it's an interesting palette. I do like the color combination. So I'm interested in it. What do you guys think? Leave me your comments down below. I wanna know what you guys think of this palette. And yeah, I think that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave me those comments. Tell me if you guys are interested in it, if you guys want me to pick it up, and I'll talk with you guys later. Bye.